I love my Xbox a lot. Right now, I might be playing my Xbox more than I play my Switch, believe it or not. A lot more people are ending up with an Xbox this holiday, whether it be because the new Halo is out or maybe just because it's the more readily available next gen system. So if you're watching this, maybe you got yourself a brand new Xbox or maybe you just really want one and you like watching videos about it or maybe you just like watching me. No, you got an Xbox. OK, well, anyway, I got a bunch of stuff you should do right when you take your Xbox out of the box box. This isn't a setup video. This is just some things to make your experience a little better or some free things you might not have known your Xbox can do. This video is sponsored by Adorama. Quest 2 VR now available at Adorama. Experience new worlds. Connect with friends anywhere. What are you? What a dude. What a man? What a man? Hey. What's your pain? Oh my God, <laughs> Exercise your way. Hang out with Mark Zuckerberg. Holy hell, it's Mark Zuckerberg. That's the Mark that's playing poker? Would you put the cards on the table? Play games like Vader Immortal, Super Hot, Resident Evil 4, and more on the Quest 2 VR headset. Adorama is selling the 256 gigabyte model for just $399. That's more than enough space for everything you'd want to play. Adorama provides the creative community with the tools and expertise to unleash their inner creator. From mirrorless cameras, microphones, tripods, and lighting, They've been around for over 50 years with products available online or at their flagship store right here in New York City. So check them out over at Adorama.com and check out their deal on the Quest 2 VR headset over at their link in the description below. Oh, Mark, what are you doing? It's like 3.30 in the morning. You guys still playing? All right, whatever. Deal me in. Wait, is the robot still there? Hi, Hi Bob. End, end, end. If you're still thinking about getting an Xbox, don't rule out the Series S just yet. At the time of writing this, it's just sitting here available on Amazon for anybody to get. It's $200 cheaper than the X. It's more readily available. Hell, it even does up to 1440p and it still does 120 frames per second. I'd bet a lot of people who want to get one of these new Xboxes aren't even going to plug it into a 4K display. Plus, the Series S is way tiny. Oh my god. Oh my god. I put this thing in my luggage when I travel. It's just as capable as the Xbox Series X. It just doesn't do 4K and it doesn't have a disk drive. But most of the games that I play on my Xbox are all digital anyway. Maybe I shouldn't just toss it in my luggage. <laughs> Also, no matter which one you decide to get, you can hack them very easily, meaning that the Xbox Series S is a nice little cheap emulation machine. And it doesn't affect the system at all. You can still play regular Xbox games on it too. So I guess that's the first thing you might not know about your new Xbox. It can play GameCube games. I have a whole video about that. If you wanna check that out, I'm not gonna get into it here. It's a long story. Anyway, I like having my Series X on this little stand next to my desk over here. It could sit horizontally or vertically, but I prefer it horizontally. It's not that big, but it's still big enough to kind of be in the way. I want to be able to put stuff on top of it, like this Christmas tree, without scratching up my new $500 device. Also, it's kind of a dust magnet sitting up here. So what I did was cut the black anti-static paper that it came with to perfectly fit the top of the Xbox Series X. You'd never even know it was there unless you looked hard enough. Now, if it gets dusty, I can just wipe this paper off. And I can put things on top of my Xbox, like the controller charge stand, without having to worry about scratching it. Next, before you even turn the system on for the first time, you should download the Xbox app on your phone. It makes the setup process a lot easier, mostly because you can use your phone's on-screen keyboard and not have to navigate the Xbox's keyboard with an Xbox controller. 
But the app is for more than just setting up the Xbox. Manage the games on your console remotely, make room so you can download and update stuff while your console is on standby, and even remotely play games right off of your Xbox from your phone. And it doesn't even disturb the Xbox at all. Look, I'm remoted in right now from my phone. You can see the home screen here and the Xbox isn't even lit up. These features are all cool, but what I use this app for mostly is sharing game content. If I save a gameplay clip or screenshot, it comes right up in the Xbox app and makes it super easy to download it to my phone to share via text or whatever. So the Xbox app is kind of essential. If you do plan on creating game content with your Xbox, you might want to check out the capture and share settings. You can change the duration of what gets recorded, and if you lower the resolution, it will increase the duration of the clips you create. 720p will be totally fine for Twitter, and I think the longer the better, so you can capture the right moments, no matter how far back they happened. But if you're making, like, YouTube content, you might want to bump up the quality a little bit. Or get, like, a real capture card. And you can also change the behavior of the share button. I like having one tap be a screenshot. Annoyingly, you can't make your Xbox and PlayStation share buttons act exactly the same. So you'll just have to remember that for Xbox, you have to hold the share button for videos and the PlayStation, you have to double tap the share button or something like that. By default, the Xbox is set to go into standby mode whenever you power it off. This means that the system is never fully powered down, so it could receive system updates and game updates when you're not playing it, so those could update in the background when you don't need them. It also allows your Xbox to be woken up from a remote connection. I don't really see any downside to leaving it like this. The Xbox seemingly doesn't even care if you unplug it from the wall when it's in this state. If you own a PlayStation 5, you might be familiar with this screen. The system seems to yell at you that you've turned the system off wrong, even when you know you've turned it off right. Well, the Xbox doesn't have this issue. I power off my Xbox whenever I'm done playing and my games are always up to date and ready to go the next time I wanna play. It's great. I rarely ever see an updating screen. My PlayStation 5 just it yells at me a lot. Hey, what are you doing, man? Oh. You gotta power me off on the home screen. I did that. Yeah, okay, dude, whatever. I did yeah, my ass. The Xbox Series X is capable of some pretty powerful display settings like 4K, 120 Hertz, HDR, variable refresh rate, all of that stuff. And the system is pretty good at detecting what your display is capable of. But if you bounce between displays a lot, maybe you wanna lock it at a certain setting. I like to leave my HDR off because HDR in Warzone kind of looks like garbage most of the time on this BenQ monitor that I have. There's also a setting called HDMI CEC. This allows the Xbox to power on certain devices in your setup. For example, you can power on your TV just by hitting the Xbox button on your controller. Also, make sure you're using an HDMI 2.1 cable so that you can ensure you're getting the most bandwidth to support all of the features that this Xbox has. When in doubt, just use the cable that the Xbox came with. Even the Xbox Series S comes with an ultra high speed HDMI 2.1 cable. Now, if you bounce between displays a lot or you have a weird HDMI pass through setup like I have here at my desk, you might run into some problems where the perceived resolution of the Xbox changes. For example, if your Xbox is set to output 4K, but you have it plugged into a 1080p display, it just might not show any video at all, which is a problem because you can't change the Xbox's settings if you can't see the settings. Well, they've made it kind of easy to fix. All you have to do is hold the Xbox button on your console to turn it off, then hold the Xbox and eject button until you hear two beeps. After the second beep, you can let go. Now you've forced your Xbox to start up in a low resolution mode. From here, you can change your settings to match your display. This will come in handy one day when your system decides to just not output to your display randomly. I promise you that. Hey, we should probably talk about playing games on here, because that's probably why you bought the thing, right? Well, the Halo multiplayer is free, so even if you're not that interested in Halo, you might as well just try it out. It's free, and it barely even takes up any space on your SSD. 
Also, your system probably came with a Game Pass trial, and if it didn't, you can usually get your first month for just a dollar. Game Pass grants you a huge library of games across all generations of Xbox, and there's some great stuff on there. One of my favorite games of the whole year, Cyber Shadow, is still on there. Everyone's favorite game of last year, Hades, is also available on Game Pass. But most importantly, the whole ass Halo campaign is on Game Pass. So instead of paying $60 for the Halo campaign, you could just get Game Pass. And when you're done playing the campaign, you could just cancel your subscription and move over to playing the multiplayer completely for free. That makes the entirety of Halo Infinite potentially just a $1 experience. Also, once a month, Microsoft gives away games with their Xbox Live subscription. If you have Game Pass Ultimate, this comes with Xbox Live. The games have been significantly worse lately. It feels like they're favoring Game Pass over their games with gold stuff, but it's still worth checking out every month. The first game that I played when I set up my Xbox Series X was Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. That's an Xbox Live arcade game from the 360. It just downloaded right to my console and it even still had my cloud save from back then. So if you have some stuff sitting in your library from the 360 era, Check those out. Most of the ones you'd want to play are even more optimized for the Series X and S now. Microsoft has done a fantastic job with backwards compatibility. For example, games like Sonic Generations received a performance boost. It's now a full 60 frames per second. The original Red Dev Redemption runs at 4K on the Series X. It's absolutely ridiculous. So even your old games will run better now than ever before. Maybe you've gotten this far in the video and you're still like, damn, all this stuff looks really cool. I wish I can get my hands on a brand new Xbox Series X. I always recommend websites like Zoolert or nowinstock.net. Just go to one of these sites, leave it open in a browser tab while you're on your computer and it will ping you whenever it finds stock available at any of these popular websites. I suspect that after the holidays, it'll be way easier to find these brand new 4K consoles in stores once parents realize that their kids are spoiled and return all of their Christmas gifts. I'm too old for that. You can't do that to me anymore. Mom, I could spend my money however the hell I want. Like, like buying two Xboxes. <laughs> So what you guys think about the Xbox Series X and S? Is this the console that you're leaving out this generation? Or was it worth it to you? Or are you thinking about picking one of these guys up? Right now, my default gaming device is my Switch, but if I want anything with any sort of graphical fidelity, I get it on my Xbox. My PlayStation 5 is over here just collecting dust until, what, Forspoken comes out, I guess? Or Sifu? Anyway, leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter and any and all of this other social media garbage. And thank you Adorama and Oculus for sponsoring this video. The Quest 2 is kind of its own console in this generation. Having all of the games play off of the headset is actually awesome. Also, if you're interested in that, I have a whole video on that too if you want to check that out. But you should, you should check it out at Adorama as well. But of course, the most important thing that you can do is just subscribe right here and turn on those notifications if you want to make sure that you know when these videos go live. This is an Xbox video. It might not tell you immediately when this thing goes live unless you have those notifications on and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe just got an Xbox and wants to know some cool stuff to do with it. Thank you guys very much. Happy holidays. Have yourself a good week.